going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC. Really <laughs> checking. You don't see my pretty sexy face, so you know I'm not alone. Kristen, say what's up. Hey, what's up, guys? Here again to be the, uh, what, what are we calling my, what are we calling me? Because I'm not excited about this one either. Uh, we're calling it Non-enthusiasm? You... Like, it's really ironic that I renamed this video series Get Hyped because you are decidedly not hyped. Not, no, I'm doing the opposite of Get Hyped. <laughs> you are, you're like, Get Unhyped. Unhyped. Get unhyped, guys. Anyways, before we get into this, quick programming note to all you guys listening. Yes, uh, well observed. Kristen is not Guapo, Guapo, and we are not here talking about AEW. Unfortunately, a, um, Guapo was not able to join me tonight or tomorrow night, so I may or may not do a video solo on... There's uh, a uh, hurricane coming into Louisiana, if you guys had, if you guys didn't know. Is, is it really bad if I do like the whole, stand back, there's a hurricane coming through? Well, New Orleans isn't flooded quite yet, but it's getting there. So I would probably skip that. All right. So I will. I may or may not be up at some point tomorrow to do a quick uh, preview for Fight for the Fallen. I am looking forward to it. There's a lot of good shit on there. Kristen's not watching AEW just yet, so uh, we can't uh, we can't really do that. Uh, evolve. Uh, I've just I've decided that I, as soon as their TV deal comes, which I think is going to be in like October. It's the same week that uh, SmackDown switches over to Fox. Uh, I will I will definitely start watching, which is more than I can say for WWE right now. Yeah. Which is weird that I'm doing. I keep up, though. I know what's going on. I just choose not to watch it live. I will say, though, um, and I was going to talk about this during the AEW video with Guapo, but I can, I can throw it at you really quick. Uh, I told you before we came on the air what uh, Vince McMahon has done with this Evolve show trying to counter-program to AEW. Um, it, a lot of people see it as a, as a really shitty move. The upside of it is you got a whole bunch of people on this card that I'm not familiar with that are probably getting TV experience for the first time. I mean, network subscriptions are going down, but like it's it's still a huge platform for people who are only used to getting exposed to whoever walks in the door that night. It is nothing but good things for Evolve. Yeah, and I mean, let's be real. Like they, they've got their tight. I don't know if it's a. I don't know if it's a real quote. If WWE is taking a real shot at AEW or anything, but what what it does for this new new wrestling wars thing is irrelevant. It's good for Evolve. It'll get new eyes on things, and it gets people like you just said experience on. You know, on not on television, but being filmed. Well, it, it does it does a couple of things, right? I mean, even if it is a petty shot at AEW, let's just say that like un, um, you know, against everybody's expectations, there's actually like decent viewership for this. And Vince sort of looks at it and says, you know what, we might do that again, and we might do that again. And if it came out of pettiness, then fine. But if it turns out that he ends up giving this platform to evolve like for whatever his reason is like at some point you you take a gift and run with it regardless of why it originally came around but exactly uh, but the fans are already we i mean you and i have talked before about like young bucks fan syndrome sasha banks fan syndrome where it's just like unless everything's going exactly their way like there's conspiracies out the wazoo right away like you got this on the same that's how it's always that's how it's always been though if it wasn't aew it was ring of honor if it wasn't ring of honor it was impact like there's always been that group yeah and i mean this one like you can make like a slight like maybe because there's there's two shows running concurrently like they're going to be those shows are going to be running at the same time but this happened after what we found out about all out because the same day as All Out, NXT UK is running a takeover in Cardiff, Wales. And they're like, oh, well, they just did that to, you know, fuck with AEW. But here's my, here's my problem with that. Like, time zones are a thing. That show, that NXT UK takeover, is playing around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, my time. So you're not taking a TV audience from them. And it's on the other side of the world. So you're not taking a live crowd from them. So tell me where the shot is. 
I got nothing for but, that. But, like I said, I will probably I, I will start watching AEW when their TV deal starts because I'm not going to buy pay-per-views right now for something that I'm not going to spend 60 bucks right now. 60 bucks is a lot of money for me right now. And so I'm not I'm not spending 60 bucks on something that I don't know if I'm going to like it yet. That's, Although that's I, think fair. One of, I think the last pay-per-view was free, Wapo told me. The last pay-per-view was free depending on how you got it. Like if you were on the Bleacher Report app, uh, then it streamed for free. Like myself, I got it through the Fight app, and it was like 10 bucks, and that's fine. That's good. I would- I would definitely pay ten bucks to watch something that I didn't. I didn't know if I was gonna like it, but yeah. sixty, sixty's a lot to ask. I think I think they're doing the same thing for through the Bleacher Report app for Fight for the Fallen. I could be wrong. Anyways, guys, anybody listening, tell me down in the box below if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think it's a uh, very tell, similar tell price. Me, yeah, tell me if it, tell me if he's right because I'll. I'll watch it then. You'll drop ten bucks, not six. Yeah, they got a lot. Yes. Of, they immediately acknowledged the backlash that they got for charging sixty bucks for Double or Nothing. So that's something, anyway. I mean, what little backlash it was, they still sold out that arena, and people still bought the pay per view. Oh yeah. I, I just think they so, realized you know. for their for their first show out, like for like looking at the backlash, they did great for their first time out. If they hadn't have gotten that backlash, hey, we could have gotten even more. So I think. Oh yeah, uh, they could have done a lot better had yeah. they not charged sixty bucks. Because I, I think a lot of wrestling fans are like me in the fact that I'm not gonna pay sixty bucks if I don't know if it's gonna be good. I mean, you could you could kind of ret- you could try kind of a. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? You kind of rationalize that. Okay, it's got these guys in it. They're great and everything. So there's a high percentage chance that it's going to be good. Right. But also, like, WWE kind of has a captive audience because over the past, like, however many years that they haven't really had competition, they've gotten us real, real used to only paying $9 a month. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I'm going to say, like, even if AEW takes off and it becomes, like, the best thing in the world, I'm still going to have a hard time justifying paying 60 bucks for a pay-per-view. Yeah, WWE's kind of spoiled us on that. Yeah, right? as much as it's not cool to give WWE credit right now, you get a lot for your 9 or $10. Now, whether you like it or not is another story. Well, um, you know, they can't guarantee that. It's true. Well... There's stuff on the AEW. I told you this. There's stuff on the AEW shows that I didn't like either. But anyways, going back to the Evolve thing for just a second, um, you got a lot of people, and I think you said you even saw the ad this week. It's like all the people that have been through Evolve that are in WWE now sort of doing a little like, hey, this is what Evolve meant to me. McIntyre was in there. Gargano was in there, I think. Ricochet was in there as well. Uh, and they're also getting some uh, some talent on loan from WWE for this show because we've got Drew Gulak versus Matt Riddle non-title match because Drew Gulak's the cruiserweight champion. But you've also got an NXT championship match between Adam Cole and Akira Tozawa on that card as well. So not only are they getting a platform, they're getting some uh, some decent names. I mean, like if you're if you're gonna watch this, you probably watch NXT. So, mm-hmm. so throw Tazawa and Matt Riddle and Drew Gulak and Adam Cole in there. Um, I mean, I'm probably going to watch Fight for the Fallen first, but I'm definitely watching both shows on Saturday. Okay. Anyways, so let's talk about Extreme Rules, because, you know, we just talked <laughs> about all the cool shit. Now let's talk about Extreme Rules. Um, you are not really watching WWE right now. <laughs> I'm keeping up, though. You're keeping up, and as we as we said to Nauseam last time you and I were in a video, uh, I think we both, like, if, if I wasn't able to watch, I'd be keeping up through what culture, <laughs> like you do. Um, I also keep up through the YouTube stuff, because every once in a while I watch something. Mm. I will say, though, okay, I might be the only one to say this, but we'll see what how, how you respond okay. to me saying this. I don't know that I like the Seth Rollins Becky Lynch storyline. Like uh, I know they're actually dating and everything, but they feel, from what I've seen, and granted, this is me not watching it live and everything. It's from me watching like the videos that are up for everything. It feels a little obnoxious. Although I will say I do like the Seth Rollins shirt that that is uh, the man's man. Oh, of course you <laughs> That's do. That's funny. That's funny. No, to me. that's rough. That's like the only exception to what I'm about to say. 
Do you remember when you and me and Guapo were getting ready for WrestleMania a couple years ago? And one of the like banter ass like middle of the middle of the card matches was John Cena and Nikki Bella versus Miz and Maurice. Yes, and I was like shitting on it. You were, and, you, and you were shitting on it, and you weren't wrong. But I went at it from the from the thing of like, yeah, it's kind of silly, but the silliness doesn't. I don't hate. Yeah. I don't hate, oh, sorry, sorry. Continue. I just like people hate. People are hating on the Seth and Becky thing, and I'm like, oh, well, they're, o- they're only identifying Becky as being Seth's uh, girlfriend. And I'm like, well, first of all, if anything, they're doing it the other way around. Second of <laughs> all, they both, because <laughs> they are. Um, they so- are. He, he's kind of being belittled as the universal champion. You know, I, I think the man's man shirt is the man's man. is fu- It's funny to me. Well, yeah, but it sort of goes along the same line as, like, the little feminist moment at the, at the end of Endgame. Like, I could do without it. <laughs> My point being, though, is everybody's like, oh, they're just trying to make it one one's identity off the other. I'm like, no, this is... Seth Rollins already has an identity. Yeah, I mean, his his credibility has sort of gone in and out in the time that he's been in WWE. He hasn't had, like, a stellar, stellar following like Becky had going into WrestleMania. Like, that's a thing. But, um, if anything, what I was about to say is it's it's modern-day Edge and Lita, and people hate me saying that, but it's true. Like, they were two individual, like, established stars. Like, there wasn't very many women in the women's division back then getting the reactions that Lita was getting. That's true. Uh, and they I can... Mean, no, I can't, I can't find a good argument against that that's true they are edge and Lita except face right now yeah well live sex and celebrations also, and such also well also what was real funny about Lita turning heel is that they just like made her slutty <laughs> they... <laughs> yeah go to, go... your, your, your heel character is that you are a slut so it's basically like lazy writing <laughs> the good old days anyway the good old days <laughs> but like, but, and I know I should care more because, like, the two main titles of Raw are involved in this match, and the match itself is kind of a mess. But I'm looking at it the same way I looked at that Cena, Miz, and, and the girls match. I should hate it, or I should roll my eyes at it, but the one thing that I've always said, and I've always said it in videos with you, I've always said it in videos with Guapo, I have a hard time hating a match where the wrestlers themselves look like they're having a blast. And, oh, I know Becky's having a blast on Twitter. Well, yeah, there's that. But like, you watch them, and they're just like everybody's like, "Oh, they don't play off a, they don't play a good couple on TV." And I'm like, "Yeah, because the couples you see on TV aren't real." First of all, <laughs> second of all, like they're they're a couple of dorks, and and I can get in on that a little bit. And they are a bunch of dorks. Have you seen Seth Rollins on Up Up Down Down? Seth no. Rollins is a, is a, is like the coolest dork there is. Like, he's a dork still, but he's, like, cooler than, like, the lower-level dorks. Right. But the thing of it is, right, and, and, and... I... Also, it's where... Up, Up, Down, Down is also where we found out that AJ Styles uh, is a terrible loser at games. <laughs> His salt level is real high when he loses at games. Nice. Well, I don't just, watch... Just, I don't watch Being Elite, go... so I'm not watching Up, Up, Down, Down. But you I just go, it, if you do if you watch anything on Up Up Down Down I think it was maybe last year or the year before uh, they always have a or they have had um, a Madden tournament on there okay. and they usually break it up into uh, Raw and SmackDown and then whoever wins each side plays each other for the championship okay. and one year it was Seth versus AJ oh, and Christ. and Seth like. Defeated AJ soundly, and AJ threw the biggest man hissy fit I've ever seen, and like threw a bitch fit about how if we were playing on Xbox, I would have done way better <laughs> because we were playing on PlayStation. Like it's hilarious. Nice. And then they made that whole thing spawn a separate series of videos where AJ Styles just breaks controllers. <laughs> nice. I don't know. Anyway, like, sorry. Side note. <laughs> no, that's fine. But it's just, like, with how... S- I don't want to say stupid, but with how potentially silly 
this match is. Like, you're never going to get a five-star classic out of this match just the way it's thrown together. So I really am defaulting back to what I said at that at that WrestleMania. is like, this is a match where everybody looks like they're having fun. Seth looks like he's having fun. Becky looks like she's having fun. I hope it, I hope it is, but for some reason, I just like... You're not in on it. Into, I'm more into them being a couple outside the ring than I am inside the ring. Yeah. And, I mean, even, like, like say what you want like about... It's, the, the idea of them being a couple outside the ring is real cool to me. The idea of them then being a couple in the ring, like, I hate it. Which may, which may go back to my John Cena and Nikki Bella thing. There you go. But, I mean, like, I, I, I don't like Corbin and I don't like Evans... I, I think they make an oddly good, like, shitty heel pairing. And even these two characters that I don't even particularly like look like they're having a bit of fun with this because all four of them have got to realize, like, how ridiculously convoluted this match is. They're like, we have to figure out a way for Seth and Becky to be in the ring together. <laughs> Well, that and that's fine. Here's here's the thing, and I'm and I'm glad you brought that up as well. Like people are people are are all upset about this whole like oh as I said before like one shouldn't define the other, and then at the last pay per view, you know Becky came out for her match, and it's like oh well you know keep in mind later on tonight she's got to be thinking about how's her boyfriend gonna do in his match, right? And that sounds really condescending. But take a look at other examples, right? Like if when Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy were like singles wrestlers and one was like the ECW champion the other one was WWE champion right like can you like you can imagine like low 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 on the card you would have had an ECW championship match and it's like well we know that his brother did good earlier on in the night let's see if he can keep up that that family success or whatever or you got a big faction that just says like undisputed era right now says they want to hold all the gold Okay, so one of them's going to have a match, and it's like, oh, well, so-and-so is going to set his set the tone for, for all the matches tonight for them, because, you know, they're all to, they've got this connection, and they've all got belts. and done, So why does it all of a sudden, like, I'm not saying you're saying this, but I'm, I'm asking hypothetically, why does it become all of a sudden wrong when it's a couple you're talking about rather than a faction or a tag team or a set of brothers or, like, it's, it's very bizarre. It's a very bizarre thing for people to land on to hate. Because, like, they, they are yeah. connected in storyline and in real life, so why wouldn't yeah. you reference it? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't... It's just not a thing that's clicking for me. Like, I like Becky, and I like Seth, but for some reason, this this idea of them being a couple in the ring is just not clicking for me. I don't hate it. Like, I don't hate both of them. I don't think there's this weird, like... Because clearly, that it's not a. I I think it's clearly not a thing. I didn't like the the Nikki Bella John Cena thing because if you watch, if when I watched how like she came back because the Bella twins left after a while and then like and they were like you know they were a thing on the card but they weren't like anywhere close to being like the headline or like being like the face of the divas division. They weren't anywhere close to that, and then they left. They were they were a nostalgia came. act. Yeah, basically. Like pe- people don't really see like, it that way because they're not they're like, like particularly old. Yeah, yeah, they're like there's two of them, and then they brought them back, and at that point they were dating Daniel Bryan and John Cena at the time when they came back, and all of a sudden they like came back as the face of the Divas Division, and that was very suspect to me. This is not a thing where like oh, Becky and Seth have been dating this whole time, and that's why she's getting the push. Clearly, she got the push because she's really fucking popular, and yeah. and the audience loves her. Yeah, and if... And, and, and then S- Seth Rollins is fucking Seth Rollins. Yeah, and it's like, okay, say this wasn't, like, this weird mix tag that they're doing. Like, say she had a defense against Lacey Evans, and she wins early on in the night. Seth Rollins goes on in the main event to face Baron Corbin and whatever, and the commentators would just be talking about, like, well, hey, you know, he's all jazzed that his girlfriend defended her title. That's got to give him momentum. That's got to have him feeling good. Like, you want to say that. Like, you want to do that kind of storytelling, because that's a thing. That's a thing that is. If you're gonna if you're gonna acknowledge them being a couple on the show, then those are things that would happen. 
exactly. I uh, I came up with what I want to happen in this match, but it's not. I like how we're just like there. There is no rhyme or reason to this show tonight. Sorry. No. I was gonna Our say like this is what I was gonna. One. This is what I was gonna this talk. One. This is what I was gonna talk about last, and then you jumped in. So I'm like, all right, cool, fuck it. Um, not from. I, and this this is not a serious. Uh, booking that I want to see, but it's one of those, if I really, really wanted to watch the world burn scenarios, like, do, do I want to see? Because it's both... Half Corbin and Lacey win? No, 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 that's just the beginning. But, because it is, like, I think they said it on What Culture, it's the longest uh, match description ever. It's Seth and Becky versus Lacey and Corbin in an extreme rules mixed tag winner take all for both titles uh stipulation added that neither like the losers can't come back and face the winners again like the description of the match is so fucking long right it is a long fucking match description so what i think or what i would love to see just to set twitter on fire would be corbin hits a low blow on Rollins, and they do some other bullshit. He, as an insulting thing, because you figure a heel like Corbin would also be kind of sexist, so the ultimate, the ultimate, like, insult to Rollins would be Rollins getting pinned by Lacey Evans. Mm -hmm. So, low blow by Corbin. Tags in. Tags in Lacey Evans. Is it an intergender, or is it mixed tag? Because it's different. Well, well, it's mixed tag. The guy... Because one of them is the guys can attack the girls and the girls can't attack the guys. And, and one of them not. is girl on girl, guy on guy. And see, they said that on Raw when they did sort of like the exhibition match. That's what they did on Raw. But yet you had Mike Kanellis tapping out to the disarmor. <coughs> Again, this is only fantasy booking, right? But okay, like, anyways, go so, ahead. So Sorry. he sends Lacey Evans in. Lacey Evans gets the pin on Seth Rollins. So Lacey Evans gets the universal title for Baron Corbin. Rollins, on his own back, turns out to actually lose his girlfriend's title, and she has nothing to do with it. So Lacey Evans is just taking that title off of Becky's boyfriend. So you figure, like, inner turmoil, roddy roddy ra. oh, they did it through scheming means because there was a low blow involved and whatever. But then... While they're celebrating, you know, raising Lacey's hand, raising Corbin's hand, they're raising each other's hands, Lacey turns around, kicks Corbin in the dick, out comes Brock with the cash in, he wins the belt, the double champions that walk out at the end of Extreme Rules are Lacey Evans and Brock Lesnar. I would almost like that, as much as I hate Brock Lesnar, but like, I would almost love that. Like, as much as that's so shit. <laughs> like, eight Lacey Evans turn, turns, quote, extra heel? Yeah. Does, would that mean that Corbin turned face? I, You know what, though, honestly? Because as much as people hate Lesnar, I think we're sick of Corbin more. I think it would be an immediate quasi, like, in the moment, it would be a quasi face turn for uh, Lacey and Brock. Just because, like, fuck Corbin. <laughs> Just fuck that guy. I don't know. I don't think any of that is going to happen, but I that's what oh, I... Oh, absolutely not. None of that is going to happen. I don't think Seth and I don't think Seth and uh, and Becky are losing their belts. No, it's it's a, it's a double exhibition for WWE's new couple. Yeah, there's no way. And you know what? Like, I'm kind of okay with that. And because that's what it is, and we know that's what it is, I won't even be mad if that's not the main event. Although I could picture Brock coming in and like fucking wrecking Seth Rollins after this shit. Yeah, set up for SummerSlam. Although. Slime. You would make, uh, I don't know how you would play it with Becky being there, because you wouldn't want, because, you know, her whole thing is she's the man kind of thing. I don't oh, know my God. Play... Brock Lesnar costs Becky Lynch the women's title. Then Brock has to tap out to the disarmor. <laughs> oh, it's 2019. Yeah. They're probably going to do that, aren't they? <laughs> Anyways. Mike, I don't know how you, because... In my mind, what happens with that, say say they win, couple is triumphant, whatever, after a long, grueling fight, 
hypothetically. Well, it's an extreme uh, rules not... match, so both fights are going to be happening. Like, yeah. the girls fighting the girls and the guys fighting the guys are going to be happening at the same time. you got to figure... Yeah. If if it's not right from the get go, very soon it's going to break into like a tornado rules type thing, where it's like everybody's fighting everywhere else. Because like I said in my mind, when you show the victory, Becky and Rollins are in the ring, and either one of two things happen when Brock comes out. Either they play Becky off as holy fuck, that's uh, that's uh. uh Brock Lesnar and like says Seth does the honorable man thing of like putting her behind him kind of thing and then he gets the shit kicked out of him and what does she do the, the during that I don't know that's the legitimate question because she's Becky Lynch the man what would the man do if the man's man was getting the shit kicked you out of him you really like, like that don't you yeah, I do. I do oh. love it. I I think I love the shirt because you know what? I think if like I think if like uh, this is gonna make it sound really insulting, and I don't mean it that way. I think you know. I don't. I'm trying to phrase it in a way that does. Okay. Just spit it I'm out. Gonna say it like, I'm just gonna say it like this. It comes out insulting. I don't mean it that way. If Seth Rollins is man enough to be like. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Whatever. My girlfriend's more successful than I am. My girlfriend's way more popular than I am. Then good on him. I think the joke's funny. That's a good take. Uh, uh, no, when they started saying, like, the man's man, like, when they started using that as, like, a catchphrase, it's certain things. And we're When they started using it as a catchphrase, it made me cringe. <laughs> Like, when Michael no, Cole it's when it, it's like, when oh, somebody... It sounds so bad. It's when somebody... Like when you when you take a thing that's just a thing and make it a thing, like and you make it a thing in quotation marks when you throw it on a t-shirt. I like the t-shirt. Uh, I think it's funny. Okay, but here's the thing though. Think about okay. Think about it logically for a second and think. Okay, I'm gonna put all of my all of my social opinions of 2019 on the shelf for a second, right? You look at that shirt. It's the man's man, right? Whose whose t-shirt is that? It's Seth's t-shirt. Is it? Or is it a Seth and Becky shirt? No, it's a Seth t-shirt, because he is the man's man. Okay. I don't know. I think it's weird. Um... <laughs> it is weird, but I think it's hilarious. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> I um, think it's hilarious in a I, dumb way. I think it would be, and I'm saying this because of the respect I have for Becky Lynch, I think a really badass thing for them to do, and they could only do it on pay-per-view. They can't do it on TV. Um, we know AEW has mentioned this on multiple occasions now that you can do stuff on pay-per-view that you can't do on regular TV. If Becky Lynch eats an F5 somewhere in the exchange, dude, that would be great. Like it would if be she awesome. actually like bowed up and tried, but then he's fucking like, I don't care if you are the man. That's fucking Brock Lesnar. He's taller than your boyfriend is. He's got 200 pounds on you at least. <laughs> Also, you're the size of his leg. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. See, here's the thing, right? And this is where you get into But the, I, if you're going to do that and still make Becky look strong in the end, make her still like the man Becky Lynch, yeah. she has to take a hit from Brock. See, and not here, like And here's where you get into here's where you get into the like F five something like that. Here's where you get into the whole like and, and I don't want to get into a, a whole big long debate about it because you and i have had this debate before but the whole debate about whether or not there should be intergender wrestling because the one side says well if you do intergender wrestling then you're talking about you know violence towards women and the other side says well if you don't do it then you're saying women can't do it and whatever i don't understand in the wrestling vernacular how another athlete the caliber of becky lynch taking an f5 is bad but a twerp on commentary like michael cole taking an f5 is is fine and it's awesome and it's part of the storyline. I mean, I'm not advocating for Renee Young to take an F5. Don't get me wrong, but it's bizarre. Like here's here is a... my opinion on on intergender matches. If WWE wants to do them and there are women willing to do them, then it's cool. Mm. But it's when you start like making storylines that if anybody would be like uncomfortable about. Because we all know from backstage stuff, from bullshit we've heard from other wrestlers and everything, that WWE isn't always, you know, when you're like, 
I'm not really comfortable doing this, that they're not always really receptive to changes in the script, especially if Vince But see, I don't, but, but see, I don't think, I don't think that's specific to intergender wrestling though. Like that should apply to, no, that's I, not, like, that's not specific to it, but it is, it is a thing that I feel like would interfere in it. Right. But if Becky Lynch is like, yeah, I want to do a story where storyline and like, I'm in this with my boyfriend and then Brock Lesnar has to give me an F5. Yeah. I mean, if I've I've totally I've always down, said if she's totally down to do that, that's cool. But if she comes up as like, dude, that guy's like two hundred pounds heavier than me. I want to take an F five from him, and WWE's like, yeah, well. But see, so you you you'd have to, you would have to protect it from the other side as well, though. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not gonna speak for Brock Lesnar, obviously. But also, like, yeah, if Brock ne- Lesnar's like, I'm gonna look like a fucking asshole if I'm like. Well, well not 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 girl. not even not even from the optics, but just like, no, nah, I'm really not comfortable doing that. Like, you would have to you would have to like it's the the permission isn't one sided either, because yeah, yeah, like there's a lot of people that are gonna be like, oh my god, how could he possibly have gone along with that? And it's like, no. But I just like I, and I as and I was long th- as everyone's okay with it, yeah. then it shouldn't be a problem. I always said sort of like the gateway to intergender wrestling would have been like if you move and again it would sort of be like on a voluntary basis type thing. I have always said um, take a couple of the women that you're not using on the regular like Raw and SmackDown rosters, have them have a couple of exhibitions on 205 Live with the cruiserweights, like. I mean, size wise, like you have to think about size at some point, and a lot of the women are about the size of a cruiserweight. So, like that, I thought that would have not only been a cool way to integrate, start integrating the intergender idea, but it would be a way to make somebody give a shit about 205 Live, because <laughs> nobody cares. Anyways, so we've talked about one match. <laughs> Probably the more interesting match, to be completely honest. There are nine more to go. I'm just saying, this one was always going to be the more interesting one. Well, yeah. And we actually got to talk about it while we were still awake, so that actually that actually worked out really, really well. We fell into some success there. Um, it happens every once in a while. Sometimes you put a bunch of monkeys in a room and they do write Shakespeare. And a blind squirrel can find his nuts twice a day. Last man <laughs> standing... Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman. Who fucking cares? See, I don't care about the match, but this is going to allow me to to bring up something that I brought up on Twitter two weeks ago and I absolutely got slaughtered for. So I'm going to put it to you because I know you're only doing like the catch-up version. Um, with the hype around Heyman and Bischoff and all those sort of things taking on their respective roles, Raw and SmackDown... Two weeks ago, Raw was sort of, like, unofficially dubbed, or we kind of assumed that it was, like, the first night of, like, the rule of Heyman. And it started off with the Falls Count Anywhere match, or between Lashley and Strowman, and they did the spot where they put each other through the Titantron. Mm -hmm. And here's where I was really torn, right? Because they started off the shit, like, you could tell that they were going... Also, everyone was super into that match. I don't think, though, it was because of that match. I think it was because it was a match starting the show, as opposed to okay, and that's and that and that's show. and that's and that's part of the point I'm about to make. Right, everything they did here, they did right. They did it right out of the gate. So, if nothing else, if you don't care about Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman, at least you know they're getting it out of the way first. That's a plus. They uh, they did it instead of an opening talking segment, which was great. And then they did a ridiculous spot with the, with the Titan Tron, which I will say to credit both guys, the spot was done really well. Um, they did the the whole like taking down a piece of the Titan Tron. They had a lot of pyro going off in the back, so people were all excited about the pyro. The way they filmed the aftermath of it, like they were taking shots from the ceiling. And they were, you know, getting the getting the commentators involved. And Corey Graves was allowed to swear on the air, and that was a big thing because we're all five years old. And everything, everything about this was done really well, except for who it was. <laughs> everything um, about this spot I... was done amazingly, except they wasted this amazing spot on uh, on two guys in a feud that nobody cares about. But I think if anybody was going to care about it, it would have been, if anybody was going to start to be, like, interested in this, 
this would have been what got them interested in it, to let them go all out as big guys, as fucking Braun Strowman, the monster among men, and Bobby Lashley, I'm not sure what his catchphrase is, but let's be honest, Bobby Lashley is a physical specimen. Oh, Bobby Lashley's moniker for the past little while has been the almighty. Okay, well that's stupid, but... (laughs) Yes, it is. But that's stupid, but they're two big guys... And if you were going to get people interested in them in a feud like this, then let them fucking destroy themselves and shit along with it. Like, when you, I've never been one to be real interested in, uh, in what I call big man wrestling. Right. Especially when it's two. Like, brawling, like, is only, ba- I've been more of a high flyer. But if you're going to get somebody interested in the brawling, especially with two guys of these size, they need to break shit. I'm not saying that every match needs to have where the ring collapses like that, like with Big Show and uh, Mark, Mark Henry. Yeah. Yeah. Like Big Show and Mark Henry, but, you know, the 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 stunt with hit them going through through the through the stage or like, you know, they need to break shit. This is if n- I'm not interested in the match, but if if they were going to try and get someone interested in the match, I feel like this is how they did it. Do it. And if you're, and you know, then you have to build on that to keep people interested in the match. See, but I think that almost has the reverse effect because, like, the cool part... Like you know, you're gonna do a highlight package before the match starts, and Roger, look what he, look what these guys are capable of. You're about to see them fight. Okay, yeah, okay, they're gonna fight. I, the thing we're all excited about happened two weeks ago, and the fight is just gonna be a fight. Like I, see, I, I know, would just be more interested. In what the fuck else they're gonna destroy? Yeah, this is why I freaking. You brought... have to do something crazy, but not too crazy, because you have to save the crate the huge thing for the pay-per-view yeah but it's so all they like... may have gone a little too crazy maybe i don't know i i, I just i, I just like wish cool spots were given to cool people like i would love to see a spot like that i mean what's a good example i can think of I'm trying to think of a big guy that we care about. Okay, like, if Lars Sullivan wasn't an asshole in real life, you could have saved a, a well-produced spot like that for, like, a uh, Lars Sullivan-Samoa Joe feud. Because then you got two guys that people... Yeah, are... if you had Samoa Joe in a feud like this with someone... Yeah. That would be interesting. It's like, but, but, but it's, but it's like what we say about Roman. Re- it's like what we say about Roman Reigns all the time. Like we, they, they keep giving Roman Reigns all these, these cool spots, these interesting stories and whatnot to try and get people to like him. And it's like, why don't you just give those spots to the people that we already like? And maybe, well, maybe fuck they gotta off. try and give these guys something to justify them on the payroll. The only thing Bobby Lashley had going for him was Leo Rush. <laughs> And... Bobby Lashley has always been like bland as. Well, I mean, I was gonna say bland as a box of saltine crackers, but then it sounds like really racist. Racist? <laughs> it sounds weirdly racist. So, so, so chocolate dip saltines. Whatever. He's super bland, is what I'm saying. Yeah. The other, the other one I was gonna use is as white bread. Also, same thing. Same conundrum. Uh, but anyway, Pumpernickel. Bobby Lashley has always <laughs> been somebody that's been pretty bland. Like, he's needed a something to make him interesting. That's how it was in TNA. Like, he got better on the mic in TNA, but, I mean, he still had to be made interesting. He's not. He's not interesting right off the bat. Yeah, no. Yeah, and it's one of those things where we like we said before, like you're not a good enough like in ring guy to make up for the fact that we don't care. That you're not in- make up the fact that you're not interesting. Yeah. I mean it's why I don't watch the Olympics. So it's a I bunch of people I don't I'm care saying... about doing impressive shit. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is that you're right in the sense that Leo Rush was the most interesting thing about him. Yeah, I mean, 
And I mean, like, I mean, that's not his fault, but I mean, it is in a way because he's just not interesting. Like he could either be like he could either have a manager or he could be the muscle for somebody else. Like he yes. he, he could be somebody's diesel. Mm-hmm. I mean, not as cool and as diesel, was... not as charismatic as diesel, but whatever. So I'm going to rank this match as a we don't give a fuck out of 10. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, ironically, here's a match that I know nothing about that I care more about than I do about Lashley and Strowman. Uh, for the Cruiserweight title, and nobody watches 205 Live, so whatever, Drew Gulak versus Tony Nese. I have nothing. It, it'll be what it'll be. I'm sort of biased, and I think we went over this exact same thing uh, last video we did. But I don't want Drew Gulak to be champion because I want him to keep coming over and doing guest spots on NXT because I think the stuff he's doing on NXT is more interesting. I mean, I flip back to what they're doing at the Evolve show and he's having another match against Matt Riddle. His match against Matt Riddle on NXT was amazing. His match against... uh, His two matches against... uh, Why can I never think of the guy's name? Kushida were amazing. I... Like, I think his his rifle spot is NXT. I think he should, quote-unquote, move up from 205 Live to NXT. So, I don't like Tony Nese, but, like, have Tony Nese take the belt for the greater good. For the greater good. Yeah. Well, it's one of those titles that I don't care about, so I don't mind putting it on people I don't care about, so that the people I do care about can do better things. Which is really, really shitty, because Tony Nese is an impressive dude in his own right, but it's not enough to make me watch 205 Live. We've said it, I mean, I mean, a lot of people have said it, it's not, a, it's not a, a unique take that I'm bringing up here. The Cruiserweight matches on these pay-per-views are, hi- are highlights of the pay-per-views, most of the time. Because you had charismatic guys, like, you had Ali in there for a little bit, and you had Pac, when, or Neville, or whatever you want to call him, when he was around, um... You had Buddy Murphy, now you got Drew Gulak and Tony Neeson there, and you know what they can do. So as sort of a breather in a pay-per-view, they are a highlight, but it's not translating into anybody watching 205 Live. I wonder why that is. I think by the time we get to the end of SmackDown, people are not, like, I don't want to say exhausted because it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but you're not at a point in the night, like, for me... I know, I know yours and my time zones are slightly different. That you go, that you go tune in to 205 Live right afterwards? Yeah. And, like, so that, I, I've and been so to SmackDown. there's not wrestling again in a couple days, you then just don't get around to watching it. Yeah. And, I mean, and it, it's entirely different, like, if they, because it's, it's, it is the dark match when you, when you go to a SmackDown live show. Like, there is a dark match after 205 Live if you're at the live show, but nobody stays for that. And the thing is, it wouldn't work the other way around. Be, or it wouldn't be the same the other way around. If they if they did 205 Live, and I, and I mean for the live crowd and for what we watch on TV, if they did 205 Live before SmackDown, I'd be in on it. Because I'd have the energy, we'd be going in, and then I'd know we were transferring over to SmackDown where the bigger names are, the more important stories are, and that would carry me all the way through. And that would be the equivalent of watching Raw. I just think having it after SmackDown, where it's, I'm sorry, but the less important people, it's a harder pull. It's a, it's a harder, it's a harder pull for the audience to keep them on for 205 Live, especially because they've done so much other stuff, like when they were doing the Mix Match Challenge, you had the Mix Match Challenge and then 205 Live. When you had Talking Smack, you had Talking Smack and then 205 Live. Like, they've done so much with it that I don't think it's... It, it's not going to hold on to the audience. That's, I mean, I'm being redundant and repetitive now. But, like, when they do the Mae Young Classic, and they do the Mae Young Classic on a Wednesday, and it's after NXT... The, the May Young Classic keeps me interested, so NXT is over, sure, I'm still going to watch the May Young Classic. 205 Live doesn't have that. Whatever that is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I hope Gulak loses, because I like him and I want him to do better shit. AJ Styles versus Ricochet for the United States Championship, which means we got to talk about 
the AJ Styles heel turn and the reformation of the club. I I liked the club. I think the club's peak was uh, beat up John Cena, but we'll see what they're going to do now. I... On the one hand, I like that, that that they're doing the faction. I like heel AJ Styles because babyface AJ Styles has a short shelf life. Like, we can take it in bits. Like, he can be face for, like, six months and then go back to being heel for a year. And... Babyface AJ Styles is almost but not as bad as babyface Randy Orton. Uh... But we actually like babyface AJ Styles for an amount of time, whereas babyface Randy Orton is... Bland as a box of saltines. And I you can, use that one. And now. you can say that because he's white. Yay, double standards. Um, well, the thing is, though, is as you say, though, like we like AJ Styles as a face, but it it lasts as long as it lasts, and then you. It there's... just yeah, it just doesn't have that longevity. I mean, AJ Styles was technically a babyface when he went on the Steven Crowder show to talk about toxic masculinity and how it's bullshit. So. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, the club have resigned. Apparently, this was a big stipulation of them resigning with WWE. So I guess the club made the club happen. That's good. It's good. Um, I don't know because they've always tap danced around it, right? Like they've had AJ and these guys. We've had these guys on their own. We've had these guys in Finn, but we've never had all four. Like, I don't think we're going to either. I see. I think we will now because, as dumb, as absolutely dumb as the wild card rule is, and we could do a whole separate video on that because it's fucking retarded. You could, like, I, again, I go back to uh, Undisputed Era as the example. You could have a faction with all the gold without it involving any major titles, because I don't think either one of those guys are getting major titles right now. But you could have Gallows and Anderson with the tag titles, um, AJ with the US title, and Balor with the IC title. I mean, if you look at the matches that are happening right now, I mean, the club will get another uh, tag title shot eventually. AJ is going for the US title on Sunday. Finn already has the IC title. And yeah, they're going to be on separate shows. But because of the wild card, that doesn't really matter. And on a pay-per-view, everybody's there anyway. So if you have one, that one moment where they're all up there holding up, the, holding up their respective belts, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Because it means mm-hmm. you, you could have people running in to help each other out with matches or whatever, and the commentators can be like all enraged. Like, oh my god, they're not even on this show. I don't know. Um... I mean, put all the club stuff aside, put all the he- the heel turn stuff aside, it's, it's, it's fucking AJ Styles versus Ricochet. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be good. Yeah, and we've already seen it on TV. Um, I know you haven't been watching live, you've been doing the YouTube thing, you've been doing the, the What Culture thing, but you've heard other people talking about this new commercial break thing that they're doing. No, I have not heard about this. Vince, I must have missed this. Vince does not want wrestling during commercials anymore. So they're coming up with these really, really convoluted ways to get around it. Whereas either it's a really short match, which can be okay, or it, they're do, like every Raw now has like two or three matches that are two out of three falls. So, like, the first two falls will happen, and then they'll just stop fighting, have a commercial break, come back and start the third fall. Or they'll put... one, that's retarded. Yeah, it is. It's really really jarring. Well, because the point of the wrestling during the commercial breaks is that, like, the people in the audience are getting more wrestling for, you know paying the extra money to come to your fucking live show as opposed to sitting on their ads watching it on TV. Oh, yeah, and if you see people on Twitter, like, that are at the live shows, during the commercial breaks, they're just, like, stalling and looking awkward and, like, posing to the crowd and trying to get people riled up. Like, uh... that's retarded, especially with how bad their live show numbers have been already. Like, with, with Ricochet and AJ Styles, um... 
They uh, what... is Vince McMahon trying to kill his own show? Probably. Like literally, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, like they had a short match. Uh, Ricochet and Styles had a short match. If it's and... a short match, that's one thing. But no, like, but here we go. Here, but here it is though. Huh? They had the short match. AJ got the pin, thought he had become champion. Another referee came out and said, no, 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 his foot was under the rope. We have to restart this match. Dropped a commercial break. Come back from commercial break. Then we restart the match. That's stupid. It, it's, like, that's, it's that's really like, jarring. That is like... That's and, like, in the span of three weeks, the they... Wh- in the span wild of, car rolls stupid. In the span of three weeks... They've they've utterly obliterated the entire stipulation of two out of three falls matches because nobody wants them anymore now because it's retarded. Um, they tried. They did. Uh, what did they do this week? They did uh, Rollins and Becky versus Andrade and Zelina Vega, which is awesome because it meant Zelina Vega was actually wrestling, which is which is a plus. But it was elimination, so Becky pinned uh, or tapped out Zelina Vega. Which meant Zelina Vega was eliminated because, it, but because it's mixed tag rules, that also meant that Becky was eliminated. So it became a one-on-one match between the guys that they reset after the commercial break. It's really like I know you're not watching it properly. Like, watch. Well, great. I'm now. I'm now never been more assured that I shouldn't <laughs> be watching than you describing this to me. You you should like, sit down is... and watch like a little bit of Raw and just see how like, like obvious and okay, jarring it so is. Have I said this on camera that like part of the reason I'm not watching is like this is my vague like I think I said this before we started rolling. Yeah. I was telling Spaz that like part of my like keeping up with it without watching it kind of thing is I could watch it if it was good. Like, I could justify watching the TV show if it was good. Because uh, I'm also doing this, like, side protest thing about the Saudi Arabia thing. That's not for everyone. Uh, I don't agree with it, so that's just my choice. So I've decided not to buy the network. Uh, I'm not buying merchandise. I'm not going to the shows. But I could maybe justify watching it to continue my support for, like, some of the wrestlers that I like, if the show was actually good. This is not going to bring me back. This is not the move. <laughs> like, this shit, every time you I hear something like this from Spaz or from What Culture or first seeing it on the YouTube, the few matches I watch on YouTube, I think... I'm like, this is why I'm not going to watch, because this is retarded. Legitimately dumb. It is. And, but this is where, and like I know, and you and I have this conversation a lot, I have this conversation with Guapo too. Like, I'm at the stage now where everybody's like, how come you're not pissed off? Like, how come you don't see how stupid some of this stuff is? I'm like, I do. Uh, I'm just at that point now where I'm very selective about what I actually get mad at. Like, I look at wrestling right now and it's like either it's going to be really awesome or it's going to be a bit goofy or it's going to completely fall on its face and i'm going to laugh like i had my time a couple years ago when i did like the scene apocalypse video and then guapo and i did the uh, naomageddon video and i've done rants like i don't i don't have it anymore it doesn't mean that i am sitting here defending wwe and saying that they're great and can't do any wrong it's just like if it's good it's good and if it's bad it's hilarious so when they do these convoluted like oh there's there's the second fall and oh look at that it's about time for a commercial and they even have michael cole on there he's like well we've got to go to a commercial break come right back and we'll reset this and we'll get back into it i'm like no 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 hundred percent no but again it's it's almost so bad it's hilarious so i'm i mean i watch raw and smackdown and i'm doing other stuff like it's the background noise it's not like nxt or nxt uk where i'm doing i'm doing like video content i'm doing reviews etc like smackdown and raw are like the background noise while i'm doing other shit so i guess i can afford for it to not be great i don't know i don't know but aj styles versus ricochet should be really good um there's rumors circulating around about ricochet potentially finding another team to help him so that it's like a three-on-three scenario 
and it might be the Street Profits. Okay. Street Profits have been on Raw the past two weeks. They haven't had a match. They've just been, like, in the back, kind of, like, hanging out, and kind of, like, being hype men for, like, hey, don't forget, we're at, we're at Raw, and this is awesome, and it's live, and later on tonight, didn't you hear, we're gonna get this, and then they did the whole, instead of, um, you know, when the commentators on the Go Home show, like, they talk about the pay-per-view that's coming up, and they just run through the card, they had, like, the Street Profits in the back, like, just hyping up the matches for this Sunday, which isn't a permanent role for them, but at the same time, they're really charismatic, and they did it well, so until they get a feud... That's awesome. And if you're going to have Ricochet and the Street Profits versus AJ Styles in the club moving forward, that will be fucking fantastic. And, I mean, if we're getting the Street Profits, I mean, Montez Ford is married to Bianca Belair, and if that means Bianca Belair is coming up, then, hey, that could be a plus two. I lost my little thing with all the matches on it. Hold on. (laughs) We've, the show's been derailed, guys. Well, I don't know. My computer's fucked. Like, if I leave it open long enough, like, it minimizes on its own. I don't understand. Alistair Black is sort of making his re-debut. Because they debuted him as a tag team partner with Ricochet. And since they split the two of them up, he's been doing the promos in the back. Talking about, like, how dark he is. And he wants somebody to pick a fight with him. And somebody did pick a fight with him this week on SmackDown. He's going to have a match at the pay-per-view against Cesaro. That can't be bad. No, I can't. Everybody was saying that this is how they were going to debut Bray Wyatt, and I really, like, half of me really wanted that. But at the same time, like, it's the brand new Bray Wyatt, and it's Aleister Black's sort of singles debut, and neither one of them can really afford a loss. Um... I don't know, I want to see Aleister Black and Bray Wyatt eventually, because I think when whenever Bray Wyatt does debut, I think it's going to be... It, it, again, it's going to be what I said a second ago. Either it's going to be amazing, or it's going to fall on its face and I'm going to laugh. Um, big rumors that Aleister Black has been working Orton on the house shows, so potential that like this match could be awesome, and then he gets attacked by Orton, and, and maybe we get Aleister Black versus Orton for SummerSlam. That Which, wouldn't be that wouldn't suck either. It wouldn't suck either. And at this point, I think Orton's sort of in the Jericho position where like he doesn't get, I mean, he had, like it's been true for years, but I think he's starting to actually realize that he doesn't get dented by a loss. So to have Alistair Black, who's relatively new on the main roster as a singles guy, go to a big four pay-per-view and get a win over Orton would be awesome. Uh, and it means something. But I mean an, an, as an initial introduction, I mean you've got You've got people that we've said over the course of time, you've got, like, T- uh, Tyler Breeze, Dolph Ziggler, etc., who are never really the focus, but they're great. They're great first opponents. Like, they're great, okay, we'll throw you in with this guy because he'll be able to help you show what you can do. I think Cesaro is an amazing choice for that, for Aleister Black. Especially in a wrestling capacity. Yeah. Well, I mean, Cesaro can go for days, but, I mean, Aleister Black, when he's partnered up with the right person is terrifying because he's a big dude and he can like knock your block off but he also has the potential to move like a cruiserweight Mm -hmm. that's why i i'm i am kind of bummed that they split up the team of ricochet and alistair black i know it was like just one more wwe odd couple but they really worked well together as a tag team I would have liked to see them get belts. It would have been one good. One of the few to- which, one of the few times that WWE randomly throws people together, but it actually worked. Yeah, and it shouldn't Sometimes have. Sometimes it does. And, 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 and it shouldn't have because it made absolutely no sense. A... Sometimes you throw monkeys in a room and they do type type up Shakespeare. I think you've already used that one tonight. I know. I'm continuing to use it. Okay. Um, the other one I was going to use is you know. A broken clock is right twice a day. And a blind squirrel can find his nuts. Hey, we're reusing And you them. use that one. Well, I mean, you set the precedent, unless you want to, like, insti- instigate another double standard. I do, yes. I love um, double standards, guys. I'm going to be the heel of the show. I love double standards. I'm kidding. 
I was going to say something really mean there, but I'm going to move on. Um, the Planets Tag Team Champions, Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, taking on Woods and Big E, taking on Heavy Machinery for the SmackDown Live Tag Titles. As much as that tag team's kind of blah, I love that tag team name. <laughs> Which? The Worlds. Oh, the, 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 the Planets Tag the Team Planets Champions? Tag Team Champions. I'm disappointed that we haven't gotten the, uh, the burlap sack tag team belts. Yes, the eco-friendly belts. Yeah. Tag team belts. I mean, clearly we should have by now. If we're going to continue that gimmick, then we need to have the eco-friendly belts. Where are my eco-friendly belts? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, I'm just saying, if you're gonna lean it, if you're gonna do that gimmick, as much as it's annoying to some people, then fucking do that gimmick. Every I mean, time they get belts, they get uh, they get an eco fr- they make an eco friendly belt. Them's the rules. WWE needs to make that title belt money. People actually mm-hmm. bought that burlap sack and wood. Daniel Bryan WWE title. That that makes me sad a little bit. I'm not going to lie. People are buying the 24-7 title that looks like a big watch. That is an ugly belt. It is an ugly belt. Um, I'm really, really torn in this match. Because initially, I want Heavy Machinery to win. Because you've got two singles guys... You've got two-thirds of a team and one actual, like, we came here as a tag team, we are a tag team. But I, I'm i I'm also sort of looking at Woods and Big E, because as much as I have my opinions of Daniel Bryan, or uh, of uh, Kofi Kingston being WWE champion, having all of New Day hold individual belts rather than the three of them sharing two tag team belts wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Like, it would, be, it would be a feel-good... As much as it would be cheesy, and as much as they would all come out with, like, pancakes galore, and I, I would vomit in my mouth a little, it would be a feel-good moment for those three guys. Now, if, if, if Kofi Kingston goes on later on in the night to lose his belt, <laughs> then the irony would be thick in the room. Um, who do you want? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you for your predi- prediction of who's actually going to win, but who do you want in this match? I would want that, what you just said. I want the feel-good moment. You want Woods and Big E? There's so few feel-good moments in WWE, except at Mania. I mean, sometimes. Becky and Seth are happy. Like, I'm happy for them. If you're crunchy, yeah, and you but can't I, be happy I, for them. I want, I want feel-good moments that I like. <laughs> that, I <care> <laughs> that was a fuck you and your desires, Spaz. Yes. <laughs> That's, I'm okay with that. Uh, but you know what, though? Like, they're, like uh, as far as most people are concerned, there's... like Okay, Rowan's not a star on his own. But, like, there's three stars in this match and three other guys in this match. Like, Rowan isn't going to be a champion on his own, I don't think. Heavy Machinery are there to be a tag team. Like, I think... Like, as much as people like them and as much as they are comedy... They're not as established a comedy gimmick as New Day. I don't think people take them 100% seriously either. I it makes them the underdogs and they're a lot of fun and I would really like to see them get tag team titles because they never got tag team titles in NXT. I do have and this goes back to uh, Nikki Cross. This goes back to Alexa Bliss. This goes back to a lot of people that have come up from NXT. I do have a little bit of extra sympathy, a little bit of extra motivation behind people that I like that never got to hold a gold in NXT because you don't go back to get that. Like, you either get it, or you move on and never had it. Heavy Machinery were never the NXT Tag Team Champions. I, I'd i love to see them get some, some title gold here. And it would be pretty amazing to get to get, get one over on Daniel Bryan and the New Day. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I want the feel-good moment. Or, or I want my, my eco-friendly belts. One or the other. What if they come out and debut eco-friendly belts this Sunday and lose them? Yes, all of it. Yes to all of it. Anyways, um, on the Raw side, it's a little more boring because it's Usos revival, which means you know it's going to be good. But they've but already dri- seen it but they've already times. driven into the ground. Neither one of the tag, I mean the ta- the SmackDown tag title match is a triple threat match, but there's no real extra. 
there's no real extra steps on either of the tag team title matches. I really thought one of them would have ended up being like a ladder match or something like that. Uso's revival in a ladder match would have been killer. But about the whole point of these pay-per-views that had as a stipulation as their name is that that is the stipulation for the entire pay-per-view. Yeah. I know it's never been that way, but it feels wrong that it's not. The only the only gimmick and this I'm sorry, I've got to give TNA credit here. The only gimmick pay-per-view there's ever been where the gimmick actually was true for the whole pay-per-view was when Impact did lockdown. And every match was in a cage. I don't think WWE has ever had a pay-per-view no. where they, you're you're absolutely right. I don't think WWE has uh has ever done that, which is why it's dumb to name a whole pay per view after a, a a gimmick for a match. Anyways, I don't revival and revival and uh, and the Usos is going to be good, but we've seen it a thousand times, and not like it's been a while since we've seen it, like recently, and also. You know, WWE shits on the revival, even though they're great, and even though they want their release, and so like we just want we want them off our TV because I mean, if you're at all a smart mark, you want them. You know, they don't want to be there, or you've heard that they don't want to be there. We shouldn't say no because yeah, I mean, in this case, I they don't want to be there, so we just want them to like leave because we want them to be like we don't want them to continue to be shit on I don't think and this is this is going to be really weird because it's going to sound like I'm taking a shot at AEW and I'm not but I don't think Cody and the other people at AEW constantly referencing the revival is doing the revival any favors as oh no it's not I don't think that is a shot at them I think that's a like if you really want them in your company, then fucking stop making it look like you want them in their company. Because clearly Vince is a vindictive little bitch <laughs> and will do it to spot. If any, either of them get injured, that's like an extra six months that they're stuck. That one of them is at least stuck. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're they're locked Just in. At, they're locked Vince. in at different times too. I think one of them gets released at one time, and then one of them gets released like six months later. Like, you know, if Vince thinks, gets a whiff of he thinks AEW wants them, then he's going to be a little asshole about it. We all know this. I don't think it's even a matter of specifically AEW wanting them. Vince just isn't letting anybody go right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, though. Like, here's the one thing I will say. The whole, everybody always gets gets really, uh, you know, up their own asses on Twitter and whatever when you hear these stories of, like, hey... WWE has this clause in your contract that if you get injured for, like, six months, we can come back and get those six months from you because it's part of what you contracted for. And, like, yeah, they can do... They have the option. They can do that or not. They can decide to let you go or not. But, I'm sorry, it was in the contract when you signed it. So there is a level of either you did agree to it and now you just don't like it anymore or you didn't read your contract very well. So I hey, do Bob, have I do have sympathy for I, them. I do. Yeah, but I it, but it's very because it, I agree with you because I agree with you with all that. You should, it, if you learn anything in the adult world, people is like if you are handed a contract to sign, you should fucking read that shit. Yeah. You should. I mean, technically, we are all signing a contract every time you download a new app, and they're like, hey, read this set of agreements. And yep. you just go, yeah, 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 scroll, agree. Yeah. And the other thing is, too, is like, oh, you know, Vince likes to bury people on their way out. Well, WWE, and I'm not being an apologist here, I'm just being a realist, WWE in either whether it's a big way or a small way, they put a lot of money into whoever they put on their television. Whether it's just the time, whether it's the you know the special entrance or whatever the case may be, there's a lot of production put into WWE. So there's a lot of time, there's a lot of investment there. Why would they do that right until the end? Because if they are still treating you like the biggest thing ever on your last day, what they're really doing is advertising somebody that's about to be on another show. And mm -hmm. for WWE to say, I'm sorry, I don't want to advertise for my competition, that's not 
a bad thing. <laughs> That's not a bad business decision. Yeah, and um, I mean, we like, may not like it. Yeah. But... I mean, I know, like, within There's the re- reason WWE still exists. No, but but, but like it or not. But but even even logically, like, what happened with Ambrose? I mean, I make the jokes all the time about how Ambrose is a work and whatever. But the way Ambrose was treated like gold right up until the day he left, I mean, you can't expect that. You really can't. And it's like, oh, people have to lose on their way out because yeah, WWE is going to reward the people that are staying. Loyalty gets rewarded, and that, what people don't get, and not even in wrestling, just in life, loyalty is rewarded, and that's not a bad thing, because if you were being loyal and not being rewarded, you'd bitch just as much. You'd bitch more. Well, exactly. And this is why, and I'm going to tangent for a second. Go ahead. Seth Rollins on Twitter, and his little war with uh, little Willie Ospreay there talking about how WWE is, like, the best company ever, and we've got some of the best wrestlers, and basically, like, waving the company flag real big. Your thoughts? I mean, uh, why would he not... I don't understand why everybody's losing the shit. Why would he not do that? His his options are wave the company flag or not say anything. Yeah. Because if he does the third option, which, sh- like, shit on WWE... Like a Sasha Banks has been doing, slyly. Not even slyly, like, Sasha... She, look, passive the ni- aggressive, like, passive aggressive. The like, night she lo- had she had to drop those belts, she had a temper tantrum in the locker room, and it hasn't stopped yet. I mean, that's only... That's only... Gonna, gonna fuck you in the end. Mm. And also, why wouldn't Seth Rollins be all for WWE right now? He's fucking Seth Rollins. He's doing great in WWE. Like, sure, he's the universal champion. He's, in a way, become, like, almost like the new edge when it comes to title placements. Yeah. Seth Rollins has become a guy that, like, we don't know what to do with the title right now. We'll just put it on Seth because that's safe. It's safe, and they know it's somebody that the crowd will not be against. Like, Mm -hmm. they're putting it on Rollins because they know they can't put it on Reigns right now. And I know that's pessimistic, but that's that's at least part of it. But, like, why would you, like, look at the position he's in right now. Look at the position his girlfriend's in right now. Why would you not praise that part of it? And the rest of it's like, oh, well, we have the best roster. Like, find people elsewhere in the world that can find what we do. And the first person he praised was Ricochet. Like, Rollins is not... He's not wrong. They do have the best roster in the world. They're not doing shit with it. But they do have a great roster. Yeah, but like this whole thing, and it's and it's and it's and it's all and it's all what we talked about before. It's all the like it's invoked to not like WWE right now. But what did he get demonized for? He got demonized for playing up the company that he works for, playing up the roster that he gets to work with. Um, he put over Ricochet. Uh, I think the the nastiest thing he said to Will Ospreay was like, "We got the better version of you," and he just became the United States champion. By the way, congratulations, Ricochet! All the, all your success, rah, 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 rah. And then Mike Bennett came o- came along in behind that and put over Seth Rollins. So you've got this this roster that knows what the rest of the world thinks of them. They're all banding together to say, "No, we are as good as we say we are," and there's like some unity there. I'm sorry, if I'm Vince McMahon or Triple H or anybody else, I want that roster because that's that's a that's a cohesive like working together roster. They have egos. They should have egos because they are good. Uh, they're a hell of a lot more productive in that locker room than somebody like Sasha Banks is. <laughs> and it's always you're always gonna want to keep people that actually want to be there. I mean. Clearly, they're keeping people that don't want to be there, too. Yeah. But the most valuable people on your company, in any company, are people that want to be there and want to work and want to wave the company flag. And on, and on a more personal note, like, Rollins isn't there putting himself over 
necessarily. He's putting over his company, he's putting over his roster, he's putting over the other talent he sees around him. But even if he was putting himself over at this point, like, is he the most spectacular? Like, is he a video game character like Ricochet? No. Is he an absolute powerhouse like a Cesaro? No. But he's, like, the happy median of all these things. That's why he's a world champion. If he was out there putting himself over, why not? Like, I don't understand going on Twitter and telling somebody that has achieved that much success not to be proud of themselves. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I don't know. It, it it gets into that whole, like, is social media good or bad for wrestling? And the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, the answer is both. I meant to mention that earlier when we were talking about the Becky match, because obviously, or the Becky and Seth match, because obviously they have entirely different experiences in the Twitterverse. But, I mean, it's just, how dare you be happy for your friends and be happy to be where you are and be proud of what you've achieved? Like, fuck off. Moving on. What I think is going to be one of the more ridiculous but fun matches of the evening. Uh, SmackDown Live women's title handicap match. Bliss and Cross versus Bailey. Yeah, I saw that where uh, uh, Cross is talking about being co-women's champions. I have a theory on what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's going to make a lot of other people look very silly. Because everybody right now is going like, oh, you know, Alexa Bliss is just stringing Nikki Cross along. We've seen this so many times. She used Mickey James. She used Nia Jax, etc. But uh, Nikki Cross is crazy. And I really do have a strong feeling that, like, when Bliss quote-unquote turns on her, Cross is just going to be like, no, I knew you were going to do that. By the way, fuck you. Beat the shit out of her. Take her belt. Like, I think the, ter- the turn is going to get turned on. Mm-hmm. Because the... Um, before they started actually doing this, there was a thing on WWE.com, like, forever and ever and ever ago, like, when Nikki Cross was just being, like, weird in the back and, like, growling at people and shit. They had that segment where it was announced Alexa Bliss was going to be the host of WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And you could hear it because it was happening, like, at the same time. You see her, like, listening through the curtain to Alexa Bliss's announcement. And she does, you know, the who wants to play with Nikki? And it's like, maybe Alexa wants to play. And then, like, they didn't do anything with it. And now they're doing this. So I'm like, yeah, she's coming off as naive. I want it, I want it to turn around and be like, well, I wasn't really naive. And by the way, go fuck yourself. And then we get Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Cross. And whoever wins out of that is a win for me. I. That would be way more interesting than it, it the be... obvious thing that's probably going to happen. Well, I mean, Nikki Cross isn't Nia Jax, and and let's all thank God for that. Um, I mean, I could see it going both ways. I I could see Bliss winning with Cross's help, and then after the match is over, she drops Cross. Cross gets annoyed, and uh, they go from there. Or I could see them going with Cross winning. Uh, because she calls out Bliss on her bullshit right as the match is going and, like, steals the pin. Uh, I don't know which way they're going to go. I don't think Bailey leaves with that title, though. This is probably a match I'm interested in, actually interested in seeing, so I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, though, like, they're trying to give Bailey more of an edge as well Mm -hmm. and if uh if a newfound rivalry between bliss and cross ends up costing her her title like she can amp that up slowly and and Mm -hmm. build on that because she can't be the bailey she was in nxt and not just because it's the main roster and the main roster ruined her um like she's like the the super lovable girl next door baby face like super baby face and i'm sorry there is about three or four girls in NXT right now. There are there's Dakota Kai, there's Zaya Brookside, there is Millie McKenzie, there is one more that oh uh, there's two more names that I can't think of right now. Eladon, Candy Floss, and they all pull off that not naive but like that just genuinely happy to be here, but I'll still like take you to task thing like bailey done better there's four people nipping at her heels that do what she did better than she does so she needs to do something else she needs Mm -hmm. to get fucked over on sunday to give her to give her that edge because she needs to go i'd love to see her like if finn balor does get involved in the club as well i would love to see heel bailey 
and just heal Bailey joins the club as like uh, as that like would a, be interesting if they I, and I'm not saying play her off like like uh, crazy like Mickey James was back in the day but if you have like Finn Balor join the club and she sees that and we all know how close she is with Finn and she goes along for the ride as sort of like the Finn, Finn Balor fangirl and she gets a belt again later on down the line then you've got five people in the club potentially holding belts at one time or another I think you could do a lot of cool shit with that. Um, but she's got to lose the title first. And, I mean, then you have Bliss and Cross, who are both on Raw, fighting over the SmackDown women's title, because, yeah. Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville needs a singles push, and Sonya Deville needs a singles title. Because as much as I love Mandy Rose, I want to see Sonya Deville succeed, because she's fucking awesome, too. That's an entire side note, mm-hmm. though. Kofi Kingston. Sorry, my, my, my headphones are starting to die, so I'm having to do this thing where I switch back and forth between each ear pod. That's okay. We can still hear you, I think, so we're good. Um, Kofi Kingston versus Samoa Joe. I think it's going to be good, but is Kofi actually injured? Um, I don't know. I mean... The story is as real I kinda as... I kind of want some... Uh, I, I like Kofi as champion, unlike you, but uh, I... But I wouldn't... I think Samoa Joe can do good things with the title, too, and I think he deserves it. I don't know. Kofi's entire run has been 11 years, 11 years, 11 years, 11 years, 11 years. I got 11 written on the ass of my pants. Did I mention 11 years, 11 years, 11 years, and like we all know the real story there, and it's sort of obnoxious, and what is, I'm sorry, like, and you can you can say that I'm, I'm whatever, whenever Kofi Kingston comes out, and he's still doing, like, I get the New Day shtick is popular, and it's fine, and if he still wants to do the New Day shtick as champion, I think it's dumb, but okay, but if you're going to come out there and do the New Day shtick, and then play tough guy... I'm going to laugh, especially when it's Samoa Joe. Mm-hmm. The only person that he could be facing right now that I would laugh at even more than Samoa Joe would be if he was going up against Tommaso Ciampa. Alas, Samo- Tommaso Ciampa is still injured, though. Yeah, but Tommaso Ciampa versus Kofi Kingston would be a slaughter. And it should. I think it'd still be a good match. Oh, no, I'm saying, like, it would be a slaughter of Kofi Kingston. <laughs> um, I mean, like, that's just the Kofi side of the equation. I mean, also, Samoa Joe is, like, ridiculously overdue to hold a main title. Mm-hmm. Like, rid- like, the amount of times that they've put him in scenarios, like, they had him in there with Brock, they had him in there with Strowman, they had him in there with, you know, person XYZ. And, like, it's going to get to the point where, like, we, we all eventually referred to the old Bray Wyatt as the guy that cried wolf because he would come out there, cut the amazing, creepy, character-driven promos, and then just never deliver on the night. Joe, at, with all his persona and all the ambiance he brings and the promos that he cuts and the devastation that he lays out, and I'm being really hyperbolic now, um, the fact that he hasn't had a title is actually starting to work against him now because it's like if you're as awesome as you as you as you appear you should have a belt by now um there's one there's one excuse that I will take if Kofi okay. if Kofi is not injured and he wins this match tonight or on Sunday there's one excuse I will take for that decision to happen and that's if we get a, a surprise cash in from Brock on Kofi, leading to Kofi Kingston versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. I don't know that I would care about that match very much, but that's really? just me. Yeah, for okay. some reason that just doesn't. I'm not saying it'd be bad. I'm just like for some reason that. Because, you know, when you usually do a, say a match, I usually have a reaction of, no, that sounds good. That does nothing for me for some reason. I don't know. I'm just thinking, remember when, when Brock came back and he had that match with Cena that we were like, oh, fuck, well, he's facing Cena, so obviously he's going to get buried. And then you just suplex John Cena's carcass 
around the a ring. A lot. Around yeah, the ring. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm not going to lie. If if I go to SummerSlam, and yes, I'm being obnoxious. I don't care. It's because I'm going to be there. If I go and sit in Scotiabank Arena, downtown Toronto, that weekend, and I get to see Brock Lesnar ragdoll Kofi Kingston and the rest of the New Day around the ring for a couple of minutes... I am okay with that. Now, who takes it off of Brock? I have no idea. I, uh... I mean, it'd be different, but I just am not ready to see Brock as champion again. I mean, he's going to be. It's inevitable. He has the... I mean, if they want to, if they just want him on the marquee for SummerSlam because it's a big four pay per view, and they're going into the the deal on SmackDown, and they want, I know Fox wants. I think Fox said flat out they want Brock and Ronda to be on SmackDown. So if they're going to just do that to appease the, the Fox network for a little bit, because you know Lesnar's going to go away again anyway. Mm-hmm. I would really love to see him ragdoll Kofi Kingston, and then maybe the next month, like give it a one one month reign. And just have him get his head kicked off by somebody like Drew McIntyre. And let Drew, somebody like Drew McIntyre have a nice long... If you're not going to give Joe a nice long run, give somebody like Drew McIntyre a nice... Because Drew McIntyre has been playing everybody's lackey, like, for a while now. And, mm-hmm. like, he was he was Dolph Ziggler's lackey, and then he was... Um... Then he was with with all the big guys for a while, and yeah. then... Now yeah, now he's... Uh, now he's... Uh, now he's Shane McMahon's Shane's... lackey. Lackey. Okay, speaking of Shane, and we're going to talk about that match in a second as well, uh, the face turn of Kevin Owens. Uh, I saw something about how, I didn't actually watch the video, but I saw something about how they're trying to make him the new CM Punk. Uh, they did have him because do Because he, quote, did a pipe bomb. He didn't do a pipe bomb. He just, like, came out and... He basically, he basically came out and had, he, he burst into the arena, and he sort of had a temper tantrum on the mic, but it was not the type of temper tantrum you roll your eyes at, if I can say that. It was just like, he was just out there, not cutting a typical WWE-ish promo, ranting into the mic, always sort of moving like around the ring, around the ringside area, around the crowd, because he knew that people were coming to try and get him out of the arena. They kept on cutting off his mics. Eventually, he just like grabbed the headset off of Byron Saxton's head, and he was yelling into that. And it was all the shit about, like, you know, you said that, you know, the fans were going to be the authority, and all we got was more Shane McMahon, and, and then he starts name-dropping people that never get on TV, like Asuka and Kairi Sane and Apollo Crews and Shinsuke Nakamura, and it was good. It was it was sort of like it was a really cool, hectic beginning to SmackDown. It wasn't a pipe bomb. People love to just say that. I love the fact that because people overuse that phrase, even CM Punk himself is sick of it. Like it's it's not not everything's a pipe bomb, but him coming back at the end of the night and uh, dropping Shane McMahon with a stunner was was pretty good. So so that's gonna be a thing now. Um. I had something else to say, and it totally fell out of the back end of my head. But yeah, so we're going to get off of the Roman Reigns stuff soon, and we're probably going to get Shane versus... If we get Shane versus Owens in a one-off, because the rumor is after Bischoff and Heyman take over, Shane McMahon's going to be written off TV as as this big, like obnoxious, overbearing um, heel authority figure. Like Owens is there to face Shane McMahon, but he's also there to be the reason... Shane gets taken off TV, like, so he's obviously gonna get the shit kicked out of him, we're not gonna see him again. So if we get, like, a street fight between Shane and Owens, again, I'm th- I'm looking forward to SummerSlam, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I what? just keep thinking back to the phrase, I just keep thinking back to when Shane came back and everybody was real excited and everything, and it just makes me think of the phrase, like, you know, if you <laughs> either die the hero or you yeah. live long enough to become the villain... <laughs> I got, that's kind of what's happened to Shane. See, for me, it makes me think of the phrase, be careful what you wish for. Mm-hmm. Because, like like you say, we did, we did want to see Shane. And the thing is, though, like, Shane, he's not a wrestler, obviously. But he is at, great at being, like, the obnoxious little twerp that can do just enough to get by. It, if, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the fact that he's, like, 
he's feuding with Owens now, and he's feuding with Roman, and he's feuding with Miz, depending then on what show. he's feuding with, like, everybody. And he's building his, like, mini corporation, and that... Like, basically, he is the main focus of ev- almost every single SmackDown feud. Well, yeah, well, SmackDown and Raw, because, like, the Revival are the Raw champions, and they're sort mm-hmm. of associated with him. So Shane has his own feuds... Plus, he's in a feud with whoever Elias is feuding with. He's in a feud with whoever Drew McIntyre is feuding with. He's in a feud with whoever the Revival are feuding with. And he's being trying to be the boss, like, overall. If he had a single feud, like, if him and Roman Reigns was, like, a one-on-one thing, and he was just fucking with Roman Reigns, and we got a little bit of that once a week, like everybody else gets in there once a week, I wouldn't have a problem with it at all. Let him do it. It's going to be lame. We're going to roll our eyes. He's going to say some stupid shit, and he's going to get speared. Carry on with the day. But. But we got to talk about it. Because I'm really, really scared that this is going to be the main event. Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns and The Undertaker for reasons. Because we want the Undertaker. This is, and this is another reason why I don't want to watch. Because every time <laughs> after a specific point in time, I've watched the Undertaker. You think, oh, it's really sad now, and that's not how I want to feel about the fucking Undertaker. Yep. I. Uh... I don't want to be one of those people that like just retire. Just retire, but... But you are. <laughs> but just retire. Please. It's really... It, it's making us all sad. It is, and... You might have to talk for a second, because I'm just looking something up for a moment. It's just really... Uh, like... I'd, I'd have nothing else to say. It's just really sad to watch. And I think the epitome of that sadness was that um, Saudi Arabia pay-per-view, which I did not watch, but I heard that everybody was like, why? This looks so sad. Why? Why? Why is this a thing? Why? Why are we watching these two old men beat up each other? Well, because of reasons, obviously. Um, If you can... Look at our Skype conversation. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. That is not good. <laughs> Under- He's showing... Uh, uh, context. He's showing a Undertaker Roman Reigns design... Shirt design. They, that is selling, I assume, on WWEshop.com. That's that's a screen cap from WWE Shop. W or Roman Reigns. A, Roman Reigns. Awful shirt. Roman that Reigns. Awful. No, it's it's worse for what it represents because that means Roman Reigns and Undertaker as a tag team are a thing. This is this is like the man's man. This is why I I, mm-hmm. I nailed down so hard earlier on the T-shirt conversation because once something is a thing, it's a thing. This is this means that they are a tag team in WWE now. This means now. that it is a thing. Like they have tag team merch. They are, if you can read the back of that shirt, they are the graveyard dogs. That is such a bad team name. <laughs> like now that that makes me sad. I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> you know what's sad too is if you look at it. For those of you listening, I know this is like really really bad radio right now. But it's two. There's two dogs, and they're behind a fence. And one of them is obviously a younger dog, and one of them is very obviously a very much older dog. And there's like one of them's got a collar with the with the Undertaker cross, and one of them's got the typical like Roman Reigns big dog collar. And it says the Graveyard Dogs on the back, and it says we run this yard. I I'm sad now. <laughs> are are you are you are you super happy that I brought that into your life? No, I'm super sad now. Remember uh, how you renamed the show Get Hyped? I am, I am, what is the opposite of hype? I'm that now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're mellowed? Because the opposite of hyper would be mellow. So you're, this is, this is Get Mellowed with Black Cat yes. Feline. <laughs> oh, man. Sad. 
It's just really sad, guys. Uh, you got old guy, you got old not wrestler guy, you got guy that nobody really likes, and you got Drew McIntyre that we're all like, please do something good soon. <laughs> Rumor is that Taker has handpicked Drew McIntyre to be his opponent at SummerSlam. I mean, I don't think I would hate that, but but uh, what what is what is it? But the... anyways, it's like I said with every Undertaker match, it's just a little more sad. <laughs> what is it that Cleary always says? He's just like, I don't want to see him in the ring anymore. I just want to see him go home, put his feet put just... his put his feet up on a nice comfy chair. Yes, go. <laughs> Come back to Austin and sell real estate, which is what he does on the side here in Austin. All right, then. I I did not know that that was a thing. But, yep. yeah. But, yeah. Because uh, cause, uh, our friend, our friend Alex, uh, always used to joke about how he wanted to come. Now that he figured out that that was a thing that The Undertaker did, he wanted to... Uh, Go go to Austin and uh, in, and buy buy real estate over the Undertaker so he could be the overtaker instead of the Undertaker. Uh, well, oh, I, I, yeah. I was about to say, I guess you can't really say it's your yard unless you buy the house. Mm-hmm. Wah, I'm going wah. to bed now. I'm sad. <laughs> You're not going to cheer for the graveyard dogs. No. See, if you were trying to get me to watch the pay per view, this did not do it. <laughs> oh come on, there's some other stuff on there that even you have admitted could be really good. I yeah, but I really don't want this to be a thing. So like, I can sacrifice those other things in order to send a message that this shouldn't be a thing. Uh, but you know, WWE's not going to take that match because they're like, oh, I guess she didn't want to see AJ Styles versus Ricochet. Yeah, I know. That's what they'll do because they're fucking idiots. Uh, hashtag... You're not get. You're not bringing me back, WWE. Hashtag graveyard dogs. Hash. Sad. <laughs> I I can't. <laughs> I I can't. And handle. my headphones died. See, even they were sad. My headphones were so sad that they just shut off. Uh, I was gonna say you said that only like one was alive at a time, and that would mean the other one was dead, which would technically mean that your headphones are the graveyard dogs. Yep, they were just that, and then and then they died because it's that they were that sad. <laughs> Oh, I can't even make any death jokes because Roman just came back from cancer, and that's not nice. All right. Close <laughs> out the show. Close out the show. Tell them where to find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Black Cat Feline. I try and do stuff on there. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram, Black Cat Feline. Are you still taking pictures of bridges? Yeah. Nice. Every once in a while. And you know where to find me or you wouldn't be here. I've been Spaz. She's been Kristen. We are your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, myself and Kristen and the Graveyard Dogs are tagging out. Bye, guys. I'm really sad, guys. Don't a freak.